Uafara, O art in Zion, Alue. Done on earth, all away be thy name. So let's look at this parable, man. Pick that up at verse 3. Come, Matthew chapter 13, verse 3. And he spake many things unto them in parables, saying, Behold, a sower went forth to sow. A sower went what? Forth to sow. Uh -huh. And when he sowed, some seeds fell by the wayside. And the fowls came and devoured them up. Some fell upon stony places, where they had not much earth. And forthwith they sprung up, because they had no deepness of earth. And when the sun was up, they were, scor they were scorched. And because they had no root, they withered away. Some fell among thorns, and the thorns sprung up and choked them. But others fell into good ground. And brought forth fruit, some a hundredfold, some sixtyfold, and some thirtyfold. Who have ears to hear, let them hear. Now this is key. He said, "Who got ears to hear, let them hear." All right, we got. Do y'all got them spiritual ears to hear? We all got two sitting on top of our head pieces, right? But do you have those spiritual ears to hear as it is written, right? So let's get the breakdown on this, man. So let's go over. Let's flip it over to the book. Let's of Mark. see what this parable is talking about. Mark 4 and 14. The sower sows the word. The sower does what? Sows the word. So when you're walking out in this earth and you're bringing forth this word, you know what I'm saying? You are a sower. But the first sower was who? A Mashiach From the beginning of the earth up until the time he walked up, you know what I'm saying? Walked the earth, right? Uh. So he said that the, the, the sower sows the word, right? Read. And these are they by the wayside. Where the word is sown. These are they by the wayside where the word is sown, right? So that's in what? The highways, the hedges, your jobs, your schools, so on and so forth, right? This is where the word is being sown daily. Uh -huh. You understand what I'm saying? When people turn it on YouTube, right? The word is dead, brother. Let's get some more understanding, right? Read. But when they have heard, Satan come immediately and take away the word that was sown in their heart. You see that? So now we got a, a formidable spiritual and physical foe that when you hear this word, here he comes immediately to take away that word that you have learned. You know what I'm saying? That's why I ain't gonna lie when my young brother said what he said, like, you know, you're gonna have to unlearn everything you learn. I'm like, brother, that, do that even make sense for you to even say that? Now it might be, okay, you need to increase in your learning or you might need to grow or what have you on the foundation. But I learned everything you've learned. Something's wrong here. But that's what I say time does. He comes in and he try to take away that word out of people's hearts. You understand what I'm saying? And we have to be careful to do what? Proverbs 4 says you must guard your heart with what? All diligence. Because out of the heart comes forth the issues of life. If you don't guard your heart, I say time will come and take that word away. Oh, yeah. He said the same thing. You know what? You're right. You're talking about them, uh, the one that was kind of like, like a dyke. And the other one was kind of, yeah, and they were was, was vehemently against the scriptures. They were twins, though. Yeah, you absolutely right. Because you know what? They used to be with our Akim back in the day. They used to be with, and then what ended up happening was, like, they ended up going to school or something happened. They told me, lost it. They, I don't even believe in the book at all. And they was out there trying to argue us down. Those are examples of what how Shaitan does. He come and try to take that word out of your heart. So guard it. Most I gave you this truth, keep it, man. This, you got a jewel. You understand what I'm saying? Remember, he said, don't cash your what before swine. Pearls. Don't cast your pearls before swine. So you got jewelry you sitting on with this world. Understand it. Let's go back. Flip. Let's just get an example of John 10 and 10. All right. Hold what you got in that mark. And then let's go go to John chapter 10 and 10. So it says, how Satan comes immediately. All right. And try to take out that word that was sown in your heart. Why? Because this is his goal. Read what you got. John 10 verse 10. The thief come not, but for to steal, to kill, and to destroy. See that? That's his main objective. He's trying to kill, steal, and destroy. That's it. He want to destroy the nation of Israel from off the, the face of this earth because we represent the most high in this earth. So again, stay on point. Mark 4 and 16. 
And these are they, likewise, which are sown on stony ground, who, when they have heard the word, immediately receive it with gladness. Now I want you to think about this. When you plant in the garden, when you get any piece of land and you want to plant seed and bring forth fruit, what's the first thing you got to do? Yeah, you know, I know we ain't farmers. I know we from the city. You know what I'm saying? But y'all read. You know what I'm saying? Make so sure it's good land. It's got to be good land. Okay, but what, what's, what's got what's got to be done? There's got to be some preparation. You got to till it, right? So you got to break the ground up. So any stones in the way, any things that's going to hinder your plants from growing, you got to do what? You got to take these things out of the way. All right, so this next group of people, all right, you got some that's going to have the word taken from them immediately. So they going to come out. Now, the word get planted, and he's going to come take it out. Now these people are going to be, they're going to be sown among stony ground. So that seed is going to be planted, but then there's stones around. There's stumbling blocks, right? Read on. Who, when they have heard the word, immediately receive it with gladness. Now, ain't we ran into people like that before now? You hear, you know what I'm saying, on the street? You know what I'm saying? You, you give people this word, they be, oh man, <laughs> it's a like, yes. You know what I'm saying? You give them that history and it's like, I knew it. Something happens. And have no root in themselves. And so endure but for a time. See, they don't have no root. What is the root? Huh? What's the root? Huh? Right, the root to a plant is what sucks up all the nutrients, right? But what is that root that we have? When that word gets sown into you, it begins to germinate and it gives you a foundation. Go ahead, Scott. Right, that's the root. But it says right here, they, they don't have no root in them. So they hear it, it sound good, you know, you understand what I'm saying? But then all of a sudden, here comes a problem. So they endure for a time. In order to be saved, what did the Mashiach say you had to do? Endure to win. The end. the end. Then you will receive salvation, right? But read on. Done. Afterward, when affliction or persecution arises. Now, when affliction or persecution comes, because that's what's going to come when you come into this truth, right? Because now you're ostracized. You looked at as a weirdo. You know what I'm saying? Labeled as a terrorist. You're crazy. You didn't go to a seminary school. You don't know what you're talking about. All right? These things, these challenges come to you, right? When you try to bring this, this, this truth to your people, you know, so on and so forth, right? Read. For the work or, or persecution arise for the word's sake. For the word's sake. That's when that real persecution going to come. Not if you did something wrong or, you know what I'm saying? When you start bringing out that word truly, you're going to get persecution and affliction, right? Read. Immediately, they are offended. They are offended or they stumble. That's a real proper translation for it. So immediately they stumble because that heat too hot. Again, so that's just like, again, you plant that seed and now that, that plant starts to come up and now it's running into these stones. These, you know what I'm saying? In these stony places. And now it's having a hard time doing what? Growing. You understand what I'm saying? And that's what, you know, this is what we're dealing with, with amongst our people. Verse 18. And these are they which are sown among thorns, such as hear the word. Stop right there. So now you got people that are sown among thorns. What are thorns? What do the thorns represent? They represent anything that could come in and choke out the word. Any weed. You understand what I'm saying? Right now, we kind of, you know, being in this captivity, you you automatically around thorns. Now, what are you going to do? Are you going to separate yourself and let yourself grow freely in the most high's word? You understand what I'm saying? Or are you going to entangle yourself with this word? And them thorns is going to come up and do what? Choke you out. But let's see what those thorns are. Constant. Read. And the cares of this world and the deceitfulness, deceitfulness of riches and the lust of other things entering in choke the word and it become unfruitful you see that so the cares of this world and that's the one thing that we all get kind of get caught up in you know what i'm saying your job your family you understand what i'm saying so when you look at uh, unfortunately like when you look at a uh, brother like kodak black of uh, the care of his world this world for him is what his fame right. his fortune you understand becoming one of them top rappers of all time this was his goal his worldly goal is you understand what i'm saying so now the word that came in and now those thorns are trying to come in and trying to choke him out. Same thing with Kendrick Lamar. Same thing, brother. He put it all out on his album. You know what I'm saying? We the Israelites. We under the curse and all that. You know what I'm saying? And then turn around and shoot a video with Rahana talking about loyalty, loyalty, loyalty to a damn secret society. I mean, but see, this is the thing. You have these, but when we read this parable, this is what our people are going to fall into with this word. You understand what I'm saying? And I'm using them as an example, not to knock them down, because we're praying that the most high increases them. But right now, they are, the, them two brothers in particular are amongst this group that we're reading about. You know what I'm saying? What these thorns are. They, and the deceitfulness of what? It says deceitfulness of riches, brother. 
You know, they really got that that problem. You know what I'm saying? We don't got that problem, brother. We working nine, I'm working 15 hours a day. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Two jobs struggling, brother. I don't know riches. You holler Lord y'all for that. You understand? Uh, Lord, yeah. But you know, we got we got the other battles to fight. But it says what the lust of this of, of other things entering in. You know what I'm saying? And that's really heavy in the world. So all types of lust and that seducing spirit is out there trying to take our people in. But all these different things come in to do what? Read that bottom portion was choke what? Choke the word and become unfruitful. You see that? So you could be amongst that and it will choke the word out of you and you become unfruitful. You know? So so where are we at? You know what I'm saying? What group do you fall in? That's something to look at amongst yourself. All right? But let's get the scripture to go along with what we just read for that particular portion. Let's go to 1 John chapter 2. And pick, it, pick it up at the 15th verse. Let's see how we can avoid being a part of those that sown among the thorns that deal with the cares of this world, the seepfulness of riches and lust of other things of this world. Let's see what the wisdom of the Most High provides for us. First John chapter 2, pick it up at 15. First John chapter 2, verse 15. Uh -huh. Love not the world. Love what? Love not the world. Uh huh. Neither the things that are in the world. You see that? So we are commanded not to love this world. Period. All right, now the globe, we have the physical world we're walking on is beautiful. It's all beautiful. You know what I'm saying? The creation itself. But what is this talking about? We're talking about the system, the philosophy, the politics, the money system, the ideologies of this world. Hate it. Okay, because truly and best believe it hates you. So it says, love not this world. Neither what? Neither the things that are in the world. You see that? And that's that's a mindset that we got to have. You know what I'm saying? We know the most high we need the most high, like Mashiach said, the most I know you need a food and drink and raiment and clean the house to you know to hide your nakedness. He knows you need these things, you know. But that's it. Be thankful for that. God. You know what I'm saying? Don't go to the most high talking about man, look man, I need that new S class or I really wanted that nice, you know, M5 or you know, forget all that. You know, the most I put you in a position to give you that, then okay, hallelujah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? But don't let that be your aspiration. All right, read on. Come. If any man love the world, the love of the Father is not in him. You see that? So if you love this world, the love of the most high is not in you. The more you look at it, look how evil this world is, right, Sakal? Yep. This world is wicked as hell. It's wicked as hell. It's wicked as hell, man. You know what I'm saying? I mean, this is it's utterly ridiculous, the things that we see. So in all reality, if you striving for righteousness, man, you're going to have an easy time looking at this place and saying, man, I hate this place, right? Especially this captivity we in, man. This sheesh, bro. Yep. All right? Read on. For all that is in the world. All that is in the world, right? And this goes for you kids. I want y'all to really pay attention to that because I know for y'all, y'all young, we all been through the age, you know what I'm saying? Where, you know, you're seeing certain videos and rappers and basketball players, you know what I'm saying? All this stuff y'all call yourself looking up to. Forget all that. We we here to tell you. You know why? Because it's going to lead. If you follow that, it's going to lead you astray. You understand what I'm saying? Do y'all understand what these so-called celebrities is doing behind the scenes? We y'all know it because we telling you about the Illuminati powers and so on and so forth. But you got to think about that. So I don't want y'all to let yourself get caught up and follow behind him. You understand what I'm saying? Because he said, all that is in the world, what? All that is in the world, uh -huh. the lust of the flesh, uh -huh. and the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life. Is what? It's not of the fathers, but it's of the world. You see that? So when y'all looking at the so-called rappers, all they do is promote the works of the flesh. All they do is promote lust. That's all they do. You know, again, we came up with that, that same thing. And we're here to tell you, you know what I'm saying? We grew up and now you see, again, you see a lot of brothers die. A lot of brothers go to jail. Following behind this world. This world is not of the most out of your heart. Period. And I'm saying that to you, brother, particularly. Because you like to follow behind. Well, daddy, can I blind my hair? Can I put a patch of blind in my hair? You know, you follow because you, you, this is, you talk about Lonzo Ball. You know what I'm saying? Like, who is this guy? But to you, it's mean something. Because you're looking at TV and it's like, oh, he's a rookie and he went to the Lakers and all this other madness, you know? But our whole point is, don't love this world, man. Why you want blind hair? You gonna have to get some scriptures? Man? Right. You want, you want to show you got leprosy. But not, not, not blind hair, like, it's like dark brown. Like, man, brown. get out of here. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? That ain't your natural color. Exactly. <laughs> but you want to follow up. That's the world. That's the way of the world, right? I'm just going to be honest. You understand? But what the whole point is, we've done it. You don't want to follow the world. Like, for example, fellas, we get a test of that. We all look. Who was our favorite? Nine times out of ten, who was your favorite basketball player coming up? Michael Jordan. Michael Jordan, right? So when we coming up, we watching Michael Jordan in the 90s, and he was a beast. 
you 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 had to have them. You tried. I, I don't. I never had a pair of shoes. Couldn't afford them until I stole some. You understand what I'm saying? But everybody wanted to be like Mike. You know what I'm saying? Everybody followed behind that. That was the ideal guy. But then we get older, you realize this dude is arrogant, wicked. He don't care about his people at all. You understand what I'm saying? He really nobody to look up to. Yeah, he was a beast on the court, but that's it. He, he's bringing nothing righteous, nothing spiritual in it. So all I'm saying is, you know what I'm saying? That, that goes for you, it goes for us. We can't love this world. Because everything we see and that's promoted in the earth is, is against the most high. All right? Read on. Verse 17. And, and the world pass away, and the lust thereof. You see that? So we talk about judgment all day, but guess what? It's coming. The Most High's word is not mocked. Just the stuff that's going on in this earth today, it's, this world will pass away. And this is why we, you shouldn't love it. Love your hollow with your whole heart, mind, and soul, and what? You love your brother as you love yourself. You know what I'm saying? That's the most important thing. Forget this world. Right? Read. Uh, do it the will of the Most High, abide forever. He that does what? He that doeth the will of the Most High, abide forever. You trying to abide forever? I think that's everybody's goal in this room. Uh -huh. We want to abide forever. Because we know physically, we most of us got to die. But what about your spirit? Mark chapter 4, chapter 4, verse 20. And these are they which are sown on good ground. So now he's going to give you some understanding on those that sown on good ground. Are you a seed sown on good ground? Or are you one sown on stone? Huh? Are you the one who Satan come and take away the word? Let's see. Uh -huh. Read. Such as hear the word and receive it and bring forth fruit, some thirtyfold, sixty, and a hundred. You see that? So when you hear most of us in here, man, we, you know what I'm saying, brothers have been in this truth, you know what I'm saying, going on some years now. You know, you try, you try to abide. You understand what I'm saying? Like the brother say he's been here 20 years. That's a that's a fight. Okay. You get some brothers come in this thing, man, learn this truth, man, get that psh, within the next year they out of here. The next couple years they out of here. We have to abide. You got to stay in this thing. There's nothing else out here for you. I'm going to tell you straight up. Everybody in this room, I'm going to tell you straight up. You leave, leave this truth if you want to. You ain't got nothing else coming out here. Oh, it's going to be worse. You understand what I'm saying? You go try to find another philosophy if you want to. There's nothing for you out here. <laughs> you, you, you're going into nothing. You know what I'm saying? And we've seen it. We've seen, you know what I'm saying? Being around brothers and sisters, you know what I'm saying? Look up, being around a couple of years, and then they're not Egyptologists. Now they out the world, you know, out in the world and all this. You know what I'm saying? We've seen it. But he said, you got to bring forth fruit, some 30, some 60, some 100 fold. And how do you do that? By abiding in the most high's word. You know, learning it. And not just hearing it, but applying it. That's how you exercise your spirit. What you just said is so key, man. Because, you know, it's crazy. Because uh, it got to be the rule out there. Because uh, me and the family was just talking about that today. It's a, it's a wholly, completely different thing to just sit there and read. And then to research. You know what I'm saying? But then... To, to research, to apply that, is the difference between knowledge, wisdom, and understanding. Now, if you don't know what knowledge, wisdom, and understanding, you're gonna end up being like most Christians or, or whatever the denomination, reading this book for years. I mean, I can call scriptures front and back with no understanding, nor know how to apply anything. You know, we cannot, uh, we cannot risk being uh, unfruitful in our walk in life. You know what I'm saying? But, I mean, that's just so key. Like, if we reading, and uh, first off, we can't just read. We have to research. And then for research, with all that getting, we got to get understanding. God. Now, if you've got some understanding and you don't apply it, what's the point? That's like going through and getting all the stuff to plant the field and then stop before you actually do the work. Right. You know what I'm saying? Why would I go buy all this seed, uh, buy what, uh, got my water, got everything, got the ground tilled, but I won't put the seed in the dirt? Right. I won't apply all of this knowledge. Right. Or even worse. You put, the, you put the seed in there, but now you're neglecting the water. Or now it's coming up. Now you're neglecting the pruning. You make sure that it continues to grow and bud and bring forth. You understand right, what I'm right. saying? You're not doing that, that that necessary labor to keep your garden blooming. You know? Yeah. Cultivation. 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 Proper term. That's that affliction and persecution is the actual pruning it. Gone. And, and, you know, trying to make sure it continues to grow. Because I may just come to territory when you're in a world full of wickedness that there's going to be persecution in the field. I mean, that's what people don't expect. No right. matter how much you tell them. You know what I'm saying? Because I got family members and people that I, you know, I try to wake up and they was like, yeah, yeah, I'm going to come through there. Come through for a while. But I, mean, I will always tell them, like, you know, this ain't what you think. Because people people assume that, oh, um, man, this the truth. Like, man, I, it ain't no wrong. 
that's the wrong way to think about it. Ain't no such thing. You know what I'm saying? And people have high expectations. And, and it's more, they, their expectations are more fairy tales than realistic. You know what I'm saying? So you can tell them all day, like, man, look, it's not like that. You have to, you, you have to anticipate all type of madness coming your way. Right. But people think, you know, you get in the truth and they think heaven off, off rip. Right. You know what I'm saying? It's right. like, nah. And, and that's the reason why when they come and they see it, oh, man, this can't be the truth. It's like, right. your right. mindset messed up. That's what it is. Right. This ain't the church, man. It's so, not. You, you know, know what I'm saying? You join the church and it's, you know, <laughs> they think everything peace is cream. You know what I'm saying? I'm saved. No, I'm straight. No, you come to this truth. You come to this truth, you got problems. Cause now here come Hashem time for real. You understand what I'm saying? Now I'm telling you, you join the altar. You know what I'm saying? In the church, you you got it. You gonna be all right. You know what I'm saying? But you come to this truth, or oh, it's gonna cook. The, the 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 pot is going to kindle.